Hey, John Cristani here, tech entrepreneur, sales and marketing expert. I'm gonna be going over how you close a deal in sales. So really important thing, this is where the money, right? This is where the big money comes in if you close deals and I'm gonna be going over exactly how to do this using the BANT framework, B-A-N-T, buyer authority need timeframe. And I'm also gonna go over a few different closes, such as the takeaway, as well as one of my best kept secrets, one of my best methods for doing sales and a framework so that the person can't say anything but yes if they've reached the end of your sales pitch. This is a pretty exciting presentation. I've done a lot of sales in my time. I'm looking forward to helping you close more deals, make more money. Let's get into this video. Hey, John Cristani here, online marketer, tech entrepreneur. And my first job was actually doing sales. I was working in a boiler room with mostly guys. Our quota was minimum 100 calls a day. So every day I was pumping out 150 calls a day, right? I'm an overachiever. Don't be lazy, you millennials. And tell me if I call you out. If you're watching this video on your phone, portrait style, and you're sitting there scrolling through the comments, type in, I got you. If I got you, flip the phone to landscape mode. Give it your full focus if you really want to learn this information the most. Type in, I got you. If you got you, then flip it back to landscape mode. Let's get into this. So first off, buyer. Okay, this is the BANT framework once again, and you can search this online BANT. But what what BANT is buyer authority need time frame. Why is this important? Well, these are the four main things you need to find out from somebody in order to close them. First off, you need to know, does this person have the money, right? You know, I used to work in investment marketing. The company didn't want to do deals that were under $25,000. Or another way of phrasing that is they only wanted people who could move over at least $25,000 into an investment. So I needed to make sure that the people I was marketing to could spend more than that. If they couldn't spend more than that, it doesn't even matter. So if people don't have the money to spend on your product or service, it doesn't even matter if you're pitching them, if they want it or anything else, they just are disqualified immediately. So always qualify based on money. Another thing is authority. So you want to make sure that somebody has the authority to actually make a decision. Now, for many purchase decisions, we're talking about small beans. Now, if you're selling consumer items online like this hat, which is, you know, 25 bucks, then most people have the authority to purchase it. You know, all they need to do is have a credit card. Authority becomes an issue is if you're selling a business product or if you're selling a more expensive product, you need to make sure that you're selling to somebody who can actually sign on the dotted line, fill out their credit card information if they're interested. So expensive products. This also matters if you are marketing to a broad audience audience. So for instance, if I'm marketing to people on YouTube, many of the people that are viewing my videos are under the age of 18. So they can't buy anything. Most of them don't have credit cards. If you are under the age of 18, let me know if you have a credit card in the comments. Type in uh, you know, your age and yes, if you have a credit card or your age and no. If you don't have a credit card, I'd be interested in uh, knowing how many people under 18 have credit cards. But that's a real thing. Do you have the authority to buy? Next item is the need. Does the person actually need the product you are selling? Do they need it? Do they want it? They don't have any desire for whatever you're selling somebody. If you're in sales, oftentimes maybe you're talking to a gatekeeper type of person, right? First off, a gatekeeper doesn't have authority to make a buying decision. Maybe you're talking to some sort of employee. Maybe they're just wasting time. Maybe they're just talking to you to waste time on the job and they don't actually care about purchasing your product or solution that you offer. So you always make sure that they have the need, the want, the desire to use your product. If they don't, you have to create it. You have to either create that want or desire or you have to move on quickly. And oftentimes in sales, the best thing is to just move on quickly to somebody who does have the need. Now, the fourth factor is the T and that means time frame. Is the person interested in buying this now or is it just something that's interesting to them in the future? 
because we want to earn commissions to close a sale, we need to make sure that the person is looking for our product, our solution now. And a good way to figure that out is simply ask the person, when are you looking to buy this product? When are you looking to make this decision by? If this is something that the person is saying, I'm really interested, I'm totally willing to buy your product, but it's just not the right time. You know, I'm gonna do it by the end of the year. I'm gonna do it a month from now. Either you haven't done your job of creating enough desire for that, or you haven't shown them why they need it now. Now, once you've qualified people on all of these things, they are a buyer, check. They have the authority to buy, check. They have the need, want, or desire, check. And they're willing to do it in a reasonable time frame. You are ready to go. Now, if the person still doesn't buy, there's a bunch of different closing techniques. You can Google it. You can Google the term closes, right? Sales closes. But I'm gonna only go over one sales close right here, which I believe is the most effective and the least scammy of them all. And it's just the takeaway. I don't like pressure tactics, but the point being, if somebody wants your product, you can just say, okay, maybe it's not a good fit for you. You aren't interested in doing this in the next month. I'm going to work with your competitor or something like that. Just take it away. Say, okay, sir, I'll let you figure it out. I found just when I was doing sales, because I do marketing, I focus on marketing, you know, I still do like business development and other sorts of relationships. I'll just take away. What I love about takeaways is it usually sorts the wheat from the chaff. It gets rid of the people who aren't actually interested in the product or who would be bad customers, but the people who are interested in being customers, it attracts them to you because they realize you are a figure of an abundance mindset. You don't need their business. And showing a customer that you don't need their business, that you run a fine business just on your own, it actually makes them more attracted to you. So that's a great method. And the other sort of secret tactic that I'm gonna go over that has helped me just do sales amazingly well, I call it the box. And the box is when you're doing sales is making sure you answer every single question and concern that the customer can possibly have before they even bring it up. So if the customer has anything other to say to you than yes, it's a deal, they seem stupid because they've already answered every single question that they could possibly ask. Now, how do we create a box where literally every single reason that a customer can think of is addressed? And the way we do that is we simply address every single objection that the customer can think of. Now, what are reasons why customers don't buy a product or service. Well, we might have, you know, time's not right. We might have customers saying it's too expensive. Down here, you know, we might have another objection that it takes too much time. And what's another objection why people might not buy a typical product or service? They might say uh, they don't trust you. They don't know you well enough yet. So all of these objections, and there could be many more objections in buying a product or a service, but these are sort of broad objections that apply to anything somebody might purchase. You can find ways to address every single one of these objections if you've worked in an industry long enough. They don't trust you. How would you address that objection? Well, you can address that objection by a number of different things. You can block that objection off. You're building a little wall to block that objection off by talking about your credibility. You can talk about your testimonial. So one thing I do, for instance, in my program is people might say, well, they don't know if the product actually works. They don't know if my training course is actually really good. And what I'll do is I'll actually just say, don't listen to me. If you don't trust me, that's fine, but trust the results and I show them testimonials of some of my students. For instance, just now, check out some of these testimonials of some of my students. That's pretty powerful, right? I have so many students at this point who have gone through my program and making money. It's almost a non-issue and I've been featured on the news, on Forbes, on Fast Company. I'm a credible person. But again, people don't know that if they've never been exposed to you. Now, if this is your first time being exposed to me, make sure you click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can be aware of future videos. All I talk about is sales and marketing on this channel. Now, another objection you might get for many products is that it's too expensive. And if people are saying that your product is too expensive, then they likely don't know about the other more expensive ways of solving that problem. An example might be for a weight loss pill, right? There are a lot of natural weight loss remedies that work very well, but the public doesn't know about them too well. Most of the public thinks that getting surgery, liposuction, or some sort of lap band, or some sort of thing like that, which is very expensive, hundreds or thousands of dollars, is a better solution. You can combat this by 
giving people evidence that your product is actually very cheap. So just say, hey, my product may cost $100, but if you were to get liposuction surgery, that costs $10,000. Or you could say, my product costs $100, but if you were to actually go to a gym and hire a personal trainer, you're gonna be spending $200 a month, which is thousands of dollars a year. So you give people comparisons and you say, instead of spending $200 a month, just spend $100 with my company. You need to give people reasons to show that to combat whatever their objections are. Too expensive? Give people examples of why your product's not expensive. Compare it to the competition, compare it to other solutions that are more expensive to show people. So as you see, we're starting to build a box here. Now let's go on. So we could talk about the timing's not right. You know, whatever product or service you're selling, you can give evidence for why the timing is right. And if people think it takes too much time to use your product or service, once again, you build a box and you show them why the time is right now. And I always tell people for my product, which is my training course, if you want to do affiliate marketing, you're saying, I'm too late. Affiliate marketing has been around for 20 years now. I got in, you know, eight years ago, full time, right? I was late to the party, but the best time to start is now. Some people compare it to the gold rush. It's not like the gold rush. The gold rush, there's a finite amount of money in the earth and you have to be the first one to get it out. This is more like the invention of electricity. Electricity was invented a hundred years ago and companies are still using electricity, right? All new companies use electricity now. Isn't that interesting, right? So is electricity a fad? Is, you know, if you weren't in electricity business, you know, a hundred years ago, do you still have a chance? 100% Apple, you know, their products use electricity, was started a hundred years after electricity was invented. How are they able to compete? Because it just takes over everything. Electricity is a foundational element for business now, and so is the internet. And the best time to get in the internet is right now, today. It's only going up. It's only going to get harder. You have so many advantages right now. So get started with affiliate marketing. Subscribe to this channel. Join these communities. If you're ready, type in I'm ready in the comments below and join our community. We have a Discord channel now. So you can like chat with other people. We have a subreddit and we have a Facebook group because I get about a 2 million messages every single day from people asking me to mentor them or like help them or like hold their hand and hug them and tell them like they're like a beautiful little snowflake of a human being. And you know what? I can't respond to 2 million people every day. So that's why we created communities where we can all help each other learn and grow. Watch my videos, subscribe to my channel, and talk to you soon.